another edition of Asian Nation, a very special show. We have uh, our guest of honor, uh, John Schneider, is with us today. How in the heck are hey, you, man? Hey, hey, hey. So I'm, great to be here with you. If I remember correctly, we share a birthday month, I believe. Are you February? No, I'm April. April, okay. Well, you're right behind me. I think I'm February and you're April. <laughs> but, but, but we're the same age. We do have a birthday in the same year, though. Yeah, I mean, we oh, are, and we have a birthday in the same and year. And I'm still ticked off about that because we're the same age, and you're aging so much better, and you're always on the go. It's like, please tell me, John Schneider, that you wake up once in a while at least, and something is sore for a few minutes before you get. <laughs> please tell me that's happening. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> But I still, but I can, I can bend over and put my palms on the floor, though. <laughs> I can't do that. I can barely bend over you and put my palms the, the, on my hips. <laughs> <laughs> the, way, the way you can do that at our age is you don't stop doing it at like 40. You just keep doing it. You man, I think I'm behind it. the curve on that one. Uh, man, there, you, you have so much going on. You're so far past Bo Duke. I mean, the, obviously, we all know you from that, but Tyler Perry, Smallville. 20 plus yeah. albums, at least five songs, number one on the country chart. You write movies, you star in movies, uh, and you have another movie coming out. Uh, and that I, I've seen, we're going to play the trailer here in a minute, and I've seen the trailer. Absolutely a uh, hilarious looking movie. I can't wait to see it. And it is thank called you, you. Poker Run. Poker you Run, all shot, it? all shot right in beautiful Louisiana, you know, which is very important to me. I, I came to Louisiana in 2011. And I am, uh, Alicia calls me a, a recovering Yankee. But I have, I've been completely adopted into Louisiana, into Louisiana culture, and I love every minute of it. I've had so much fun out there in what used to be Camp Singing Waters. And that's where she and I have filmed 10, count them, 10 films in the last seven years. That is amazing. Tell me a little bit about uh, about Poker Run. This is starting uh, in, in how we can see it here in Louisiana. Well, Poker Run is our sequel to the movie we had out last year, which was called Stand On It. Stand On It was a tribute to Smokey and the Bandit and all things Southern horsepower comedy, which, of course, Dukes of Hazard was Southern horsepower comedy. So 
Alicia convinced me to, to get back into a car out on a dirt road and start making movies that were very reminiscent of, of why people know me in the first place. So we did a, a little movie two years ago called Christmas Cars, all about uh, the, the problem of losing the studio back uh, after the 2016 flood. And that did so well, we then did a movie called Stand On It, which is our tribute to Smoking the Bandit. And that did incredibly well. So I put pen to paper or fingers to keyboard anyway, and wrote Poker Run. And we shot that all around our event that we do every year for my birthday, not in February, my birthday in April, which is an event we do out at the studio called Bo's Extravaganza. So we filmed this movie in and around Bo's Extravaganza. Anybody who was there that wanted to be in the movie is in fact in the movie. And we just had a great time. This Captured it on film. And that is what people are about to be able to see at johnschneiderstudios.com or Cineflix DOD. We have our own streaming service. We do not use an outside distributor of any kind. Uh, it is all us all the time. That way we can make sure that we monitor exactly how many sales we have. And we are not, uh, how I say it, we're, we're not uh, beholden to anyone in Hollywood. We're totally independent and we do not fraternize with the enemy. I like that, uh, you know, not taking anything away from Hollywood and the distribution houses, but I really like that because you maintain a sense of a, a major degree of control, I would think, on how, where, who, when, what, the whole thing. Well, yeah, and, and because we are totally independent, uh, we can still have the rebel flag on the car. You know, that's been a whole mess with regard to, to the Dukes of Hazard. And folks, it is the rebel flag. It's not the Confederate flag. Look it up, the Confederate flag looks entirely different than the rebel flag on the top of the General Lee or the flag on the front of my car. But also, I only, I only followed the, the normal model one time. When I first moved to Louisiana, I got outside investors and I made a movie called Smothered. And it's a horror comedy. Then I went out and, and, and broke my, my butt trying to find conventional distribution. And I got conventional distribution through a company out of Hollywood. They have owned the movie now for seven years and still claim that it hasn't made a dime. So I will, because I, I have been part of the Hollywood model for 45 or 43 years, I will say something about the Hollywood model. The Hollywood model is all about Hollywood, their propaganda, the only money you will ever see from the Hollywood model as an independent filmmaker is whatever they give you up front. Then you will never see anything else, regardless of how successful your film is. So if you're an independent thinker, if you're an independent filmmaker or musician, an independent thinker, you have got to figure out a way to be able to make, promote, and distribute your own content. And that's what Alicia and I have done. We picked up our toys out of the sandbox of Hollywood. We packed them up. We came to Louisiana, built our own sandbox, and that is where we play. Well, there it is. Boom, drop the mic. <laughs> hey, uh, can, we, uh, can, we see, can we see the trailer real quick? Absolutely. We All right, I'm going to roll the trailer for Poker Run with John Schneider, and then we'll get back with you in a second. Here we go. All right. 500 says Marietta pulls in first. I will take that action. Johnny and Tim Needham want to know if you want to play one hand of poker for $2.5 million. Can I raise? Boy, you can do whatever you want to do. We already did that part, little lady. You right, Daddy. We done did that part. My bad. No, no, no. <laughs> Why in the world would I risk the $500,000 I just won? So you could offer your friend a lifetime of financial security. I'm so going to do it yet. You think Mary is in bed? He's in. Frosty, Frosty, you got your ears on, son. I got the fire. And you. Come again. What is this all about? Here's something serious. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I wanted to skate off the ice. Which means you never actually go to the boat before. Nope, never not once. God bless you, Ricky Bobby. Oh, 
Tony, you never let me have any fun. You go when you just don't care how you get there. I didn't like you in 1977, I don't like you now. <laughs> Who the hell are you? Tyrus couldn't get out of his gig in New York. He gave me a call this morning. Just go with it. Okay. I don't care if you're Sheriff Buford Team Justice. Where is he going? Don't cut. You know the back Should of his truck says R O. Nope. Why not? Trust. The name is Roy and I like it. You understand that I'm the only one here that can actually do this thing. Show that has the car with the fancy lights in the grill. Hold on, this game, bro. Here we go again. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Don't you feel like? Don't you feel like you're a little kid again watching watching Dukes of Hazard or a teenager watching Dukes of Hazard? That is so weird. You said that because when we were growing up, I and mean, I had three siblings, and we all four had to do the chores, mow the yard, get inside, shower, or bathe in that case and eat dinner and then we got all camped out on the floor on pallets for the Dukes of Hazard, and we had to do those things before or we weren't watching the Dukes that night. Or you weren't watching the Dukes. No, it was a great way. Absolutely. Great way to get but it, to do and their that, homework, do their chores. Exactly. But that, that trailer feels like Cannonball Run or Dukes of Hazard or uh, Smokey and the Bandit. It's just, uh, you look like you have so much fun playing those roles. Does it ever get, do you ever get tired of that? No, no, I, I get to drive great cars, and we made that car, by the way. Uh, Chrysler does not make a T-top Challenger. Well, so I was wondering about the, that. The, I heard you talk yeah, about so, the car. So we, had to, the we had to make that car ourselves. You call it the Hellcat? It's a Hellcat, yeah, yeah, it's a Hellcat now, Challenger. I so, heard so we something. got to do that ourselves. I heard something that was a little disturbing as a super fan of Dukes of Hazard, that when you talked about the Hellcat, you kind of put down the general a little bit. No. Yes, you no. did. You said, hey, sorry, General Lee, but there's no car better than the Hellcat. Rah, rah, rah. Well, I do I do think the Hellcat is a is a really See? bad in a good way. I do. But I think in my Facebook post, I think I say the the greatest movie muscle car since. Okay. The general Lee. Okay. But I'll hey, let you have that. the reason why the reason why I use a Challenger and not a Trans Am is because I'm a Mopar guy. So I am I am completely uh, supporting the general Lee. In fact, we call the Friday after Thanksgiving Orange Friday in honor of the general Lee. So there you go, super fan. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> It's all I right love for, it. Thank you. Go oh. to drive another car. I'm not cheating on the General Lee. <laughs> I feel so much better. So much better. That was worth the price of this visit right there. So, oh Pope my gosh. Oh hey, and by the way, one of the one of the um, one of the things that happened out at the studio with Hurricane Ida, which it came right over the studio, is our drive-in was incapacitated. So we are going to rebuild the drive-in. We're going to actually. It's it's not going to be a blow-up screen. We're going to put pilings in the ground and we're going to build a drive-in theater out at John Schneider Studios, formerly Camp Singing Waters. So, folks, please uh, go to my, uh, get my app. My app is called John Schneider and it's free. It's for your iPhone or for your, uh, for your Android. It'll work on your laptop or on your desktop. But then I will, I will keep you posted as to exactly when the drive-in is going to open up again. And uh, I want everybody to come out for the new grand opening. We'll show Poker Run, we'll show Stand On It, uh, and then we'll get into rotation with some of the other great movies we've been showing, uh, like Jurassic Park and Grease and all that kind of stuff. But uh, please know that we are going to reopen it. We just got hit really hard, as did much of, certainly of Livingston Parish with Hurricane Ida. Um, but we will come back and we will have a great new experience for all y'all to uh, come out to beautiful downtown Holden and experience the drive-in theater. 
Uh, you got a proposed, uh, are, are you kind of targeting a, a date in mind for the reopening? Obviously, we have to do it. First. It's going to have to be, it's going to have to be like the first week in January. Okay. All right. No, wait a minute. Wait, wait, uh -oh. I'm getting a, I'm getting a message. I'm assigned to right after the December 11th. Ah, we're going to, we're going to, uh, do it right after the December 11th concert. Oh, the we're big Christmas the fest. Concert in Livingston Parish, but when we do it that soon, it will be the blow up screen. It's 50 feet tall. It's great. But the intention is to build a permanent screen there as well. So we have a free concert December 11th at Camp Singing Waters, John Schneider Studios. We have a, uh, a guest pastor coming in. Greg Locke is coming in the night before. And then we are doing our free concert. It's going to be great, going to be big stuff. And then we uh, hopefully will be showing the movie starting right after that. And you had the hazard Christmas lights? Yes, no? Are we doing the Christmas lights? Yeah, we're, working on the lights we're working on the Christmas lights. However, I will tell you that the buildings the Christmas lights were in got demolished. Yeah, so I, I don't know how that. many Christmas lights we have left. Well, it's still so be if a... you come to the Christmas lights, come with a degree of understanding that we, like you, just went through a Cat 4 hurricane. Okay, mm -hmm. so I don't want you coming in and saying, wow, these Christmas lights look kind of cheesy. Well, we're doing everything we can. <laughs> we are making our way the only way we know how. Uh, how about that? that there, there's a song in that somewhere, I think. Uh, so uh, <laughs> how can we get, uh, do we get tickets? Do we purchase tickets online? How do we get to the uh, December 11th Christmas Festival? Uh, you can get tickets online, but they're free. You just The only reason you get tickets is so we have some idea of how many people are coming. I'll be darned. Okay. Or you can do the VIP meet and greet, which actually does cost something. Go to johnschneiderstudios.com, johnschneiderstudios.com, and you will see tickets for the December 11th event. But again, I say the easiest thing to do is to get my app, because it'll live right there on your phone. You can find concert tickets, which will take you to December 11th. You can find uh, drive-in movie theater information or the store or Cineflix, which is our streaming service. Um, you can find it all on the app. We even have a, uh, a daily scratch-off opportunity to win a prize. Anything from a, from a Duke's hat to a DVD to concert tickets, all kinds of stuff. So the app is pretty great. Uh, developed, by the way, developed right in Baton Rouge, right? Listen to that. De yeah. You're talking what to is the it called? Blue Tech. Blue Tech. Give him a plug. Absolutely. Glenn and Blue Tech developed our app. It's fantastic, and we, uh, we so appreciate all the work they've done. We try to keep everything within the state of Louisiana. Okay? I, I and it's, it's, important, it's important for us to support independent film and independent thought in the state of Louisiana, so that's what we do. Man, you are like me. I'm the biggest cheerleader for the free enterprise system you will ever meet in your life. And I love the Yay, entrepreneur good. spirit that you guys have developed there. And uh, it just, it warms my heart to know that that's planted right here in Louisiana, that you didn't choose to go somewhere else. We're so welcoming you here, as you well know. Uh, let me ask you a question, though. Absolutely. You're a successful songwriter, obviously. Is it different? How? And if so, what are the differences in writing a screenplay versus writing a hit song? Well, first of all, a screenplay is 110 pages long, uh, and, and uh, there's a lot of structure involved. Uh, in a song, you get to keep going back to the chorus, and it's only, uh, it's only maybe three minutes long. So just as far as uh, volume and the time it takes to... to uh, story beats something out. Uh, there is no way you can be inspired by something somebody says and 10 minutes later have a screenplay. Now, yesterday, I was recording with Keith Burns from Trick Pony. He's also in Stand On It and Poker Run. Yesterday was his birthday, and we were recording a Christmas song. Well, somebody said something about, uh, you know how people say, well, you know, I live here in God's country. Well, somebody said, it's all God's country. That triggered an idea, and 10 minutes later, we had a song called, It's All God's Country. Wow. So you can be, you can be inspired and have a finished product, at least on paper, in five, 10 minutes. 
with regard to a song. That doesn't happen with a uh, with a with a screenplay. We well, have the, the fact, basic I'm writing, idea. I'm writing now. Yeah, the basic I'm idea sorry, of poker that? run in ten minutes. Well, yeah, you can have the idea, but you can't have the whole thing. I mean, we go from the uh, we we adopted the Panchatula caboose. We have that at the studio, so we go from the Panchatula caboose to Tin Lizzie's, to uh, a boat race, to a dirt track, uh, and then back to the caboose. So we, you know, that that is complicated, and that all has to work out. The timing of it all has to work out, and then you have to film it. So again, when you record a song, we go in and we cut all of our music with a live band. We, we cut live. So it takes, you know, you do maybe three takes of a song and then somebody, uh, somebody will mix it and that mix may take a day. But it's conceivable from, from uh, I have a song out right now. Don't. Called, don't, uh, called, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, you can say the name there? of it. Yeah, say the name of it. I would love to play it, but I'm not there going to touch it. Okay, it's called Drinking the Kool-Aid. Okay, I heard that song. Scott Innes, wonderful Scott Innes, right from Baton Rouge, right there, sent the demo he sang on his phone. I went over it, added a couple of words, sent them to him. He sent it back. The next day, we recorded it, and five days later, it was on the air. Amazing. So there is no way... To quote Jackie Gleason, no way, no way <laughs> that you could do that with a screenplay. You can't go from, from uh, idea to your screen uh, and have a movie worth watching uh, in a week. It's just not, uh, it's not possible. It's I've, so I've wild, certainly though, not seen it. It's so wild that you're successful on both fronts, though, the songwriting, which is a little different, as you mentioned, and then the screen, screenplay. Now, you're, you're a performer, uh, you, uh, an actor, uh, you're a writer, a director. Uh, of course, your wife produces this particular film, and, yes. uh, uh, and, and, and you're a singer. What, what is your real hot button? Like, what really gives you, you know, charges you up? Is it on stage in front of an audience playing country music? Or is it behind, uh, behind the camera directing? Or is it in front of the camera acting? What, what is your hot well, button? I tell you, the, uh, um, what we're doing now is we're putting, we're writing the music that's in the movies. So Cody McCarver and Keith Burns and Scott Innes, and, and we are putting the music in the movies. So that has kind of combined those two careers. But remember, I'm a, maybe you don't know this, I'm a musical theater brat. I've done Broadway, I did community theater before Dukes of Hazard. So the singing and acting has always kind of gone together. However, I will tell you that when I am watching an audience watch a movie and listen to the music, watching them experience something like Poker Run, something like Stand On It, there is no feeling like that. So after all is said and done, my hot button is being in the back of a movie theater or a drive-in. We have our movies showing in many drive-ins now. And listening to an audience react to a movie that has come out of my soul. So that's really what makes John Schneider go, wow, this, you know, I, I am finally gaining traction. I'm finally doing at 61 what I thought I was going to be doing at 21. Um, so that's where my heart and soul lives. So I'm living vicariously through you at 61. I love this. Hey, do you have a couple of more minutes? I know you're pressed for time. I got a couple sure, of I'm enjoying every minute of it. Fantastic. Yep. Uh, I'm going to jump all over here. First of all, the uh, Reba McIntyre Christmas in Tune, uh, that's uh, going to uh, be on Lifetime, I believe, on the 26th. That's on Lifetime on the 26th. And you know, of course, that's Orange Friday in honor of the General Lee. That's when Poker Run comes out as well. So we do live in a world where you can watch Christmas in Tune and order Poker Run at the same time. Now, uh, it was such a thrill when I was doing, uh, I was with MCA back in the 80s and had four number one songs back in the 80s. And I was having those number one songs as Reba was coming into town and she was also on MCA with the same producer. Uh, his name was Jimmy Bowen. So Reba and I have known each other since about 1987. And the kind of relationship that you have with someone you've known that long uh, makes for a wonderful chemistry. 
And in this movie, you can tell that we are two people who have known and tolerated one another for a very long time. Bill. Hi, Mom. This Christmas, why the unexpected visit? It's a Christmas Eve fundraiser called The Snowball. You and Dad reunited for one night only. Reba joins the Lifetime family. There's no way in the world Joe's gonna say yes. What do you need? I need you to sing with Mom for one night. Ah. <sighs> Joe said yes. There is nothing wrong with believing in a little magic, especially not at Christmas time. Why on earth did I agree to do this? Let's see if we still got it. it November 26th. The mistletoe, the Reba McIntyre. The fallen snow. The John magic Schneider. Game, the frosty air. That Candace King. Sitting here with you now takes me back to what we had. The mistletoe. Merry Christmas, Georgia. Merry Christmas. Reba McIntyre's Christmas in Tune premieres Friday, November 26th at 8. Part of It's a Wonderful Lifetime. So I'm, I'm very anxious for people to see it. Have you, uh, I know you've acted with her, and I should know this. Have you performed on stage uh, with her as far as singing in a country venue or whatever? Only, only in this movie. Um, we had, uh, we had co-hosted the Country Music Awards and the Academy of Country Music Awards decades ago, but this will mark the first time we've actually, uh, done a duet together. And in this film, we do three. So it's, uh, it's pretty spectacular. Um, I'm, I'm anxious for people to see it and we've been doing some promotion for it. It looks great. I've not seen the whole movie, uh, but we shot it in Nashville. We had to pretend it was cold. We filmed this movie in July. Oh my God! And uh, and now now Tennessee is nothing like Louisiana in July and August, but it's it's certainly not cold. So uh, that was the only challenge I would say with regard to filming this movie is trying to pretend that we were actually cold when we were out buying a Christmas tree. I can't wait to see that. All right, I'm going to jump around again. What You have a fascination with the old Broadmoor Theater. I remember when the Broadmoor Theater on Florida Boulevard in Baton Rouge was coming down. Didn't you get the yep. sign? Do you have the sign? The, the we do. We do. Alicia Alicia grew up in Bruley. I did not know so that. So Alicia, Alicia has many, many fond memories of going to movies at the Broadmoor Theater. So when she found out that the theater was going to be torn down, we went down and we looked at the sign and we rescued it. So we got the sign, we brought it to Camp Singing Waters, to John Schneider Studios, and it's sitting right there next, well, sitting, it's been reconstructed right there next to the barn uh, at the studio. And uh, after Hurricane Ida was done, the sign was still there, it was fine, but the only thing that was left on the marquee, and I, I think we had, I can't remember what we had up there, but the only letters that were left were H-A-A. -A. So after Ida left, she left us a message, and that message was, ha! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What, uh, yep. uh, you can't see this picture that I'm showing, but I'm showing a picture of you with a guitar that looks like strings on a washboard. What the heck are you playing? And can you, does it really play? It does really play. We have a friend in Nashville, his name is, is Glenn. Uh, he makes rat rods. He makes, uh, he makes these wonderful instruments. So he t he'll take a, an existing guitar and whittle it down just enough so that it still plays and then incorporate it into something like a washboard or uh, I think he has one that's uh, that's a bedpan. I mean, it's pretty funny. So it's uh, it's he has a whole redneck band. His um, his drum kit is made up of a number of things like uh, uh, Jack Daniels barrels, and the kick drum is a still that actually smokes when you play it. So that's that's pretty cool. I'm glad you've got that picture. That is so funny. Yeah. And one more thing. This is something I just found out about you this week. And I, as a super fan, I thought I knew everything about John Schneider. Uh, you co-founded the Children's Miracle Network. And right I here did. going into the holidays. Uh, can you tell me a little about that? Was it with Marie Osmond, maybe? We st yes, we uh, we started Children's Miracle Network back in 1982. And our first telethon was 1983. So if you ask Marie, she says it started in 83. But there was a whole lot that went on before our first telethon. Uh, so we had to, we had to uh, figure out a way to raise money for children regardless of their affliction. So what 
several of us decided to do was raise money for children's hospitals all throughout the United States and Canada. Uh, and by the way, Our Lady of the Lake Children's Hospital is one of our children's hospitals, as is uh, New Orleans Children's Hospital in New Orleans. So we raise money for children's hospitals and then we give it to them with no strings attached. Uh, we don't make even any recommendations about how or where they spend the money that we raise for them. Because in order to be a children's hospital, you've got to provide health care regardless of the family's ability to pay the bill. Now, we are, this is our 40th, 2022 will mark, in my mind, our 40th year. Wow. So we have raised right at eight, there it is, billion, with a B, eight billion dollars for children's hospitals since our inception in 1982. And I'm very, very proud of that. John, that's something to be immensely proud of. Now, in 82, you were still on Dukes. Yes? No? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yep, still so on you're, Dukes. You're, you're I was 22 in 82, then. and so were you. I know. Thank you very much. Except you still look like Thank you're you in much. your 30s, and I look like I'm about 112. John, I know you got so much going on. I'm not going to keep you any longer. Uh, we're so excited to see Poker Run. That's going to be such a fun movie to see. And, of course, right here at the holidays, Christmas in Tune with Reba McIntyre all on the 26th. Well, you, know, you know, I'm going to say this one, one more thing. The South has gotten a terrible – it's been terrible what people have done, what the, the Hollywood machine uh, has done to the South, especially over the last decade or so. So, folks, I want you to support what we're doing. I want you to support independent films and all that. But if you can remember, everybody wanted to be from the South when the Dukes of Hazard was king, when everybody had a keep on trucking shirt, and Burt Reynolds was the number one box office draw in the world. Let's get the South back to the very top of the heap. Let's put fast cars and fun and community and, and honor. Let's put all of those things back at the top of the marquee at every movie theater throughout the country. And the way to start that selfishly is by supporting Christmas Cars, Stand On It, Poker Run, because we are doing everything we can to make sure that people understand Southern hospitality, friendship, doing, doing things for your friend. You know, I know people that carry an extra gallon of gas in the back of their truck just in case they run into somebody down the road who needs it. Let's put that at the pinnacle of entertainment once again. Wow, that is fantastic. Uh, and, and, and I'll bring, I'll draw it home. I have people, as you do, all the time in our encounters that say, I only buy from mom and pop stores, I only buy from local. Well, by supporting Poker yep. Run and some of these other things, independent like John Schneider, you are buying local. So yep. do it. And go to your local, uh, go to your local farmer's market, right? We have wonderful, a wonderful farmer's market right there in Denham Springs. Uh, I, just go support your local farmer's market. Start there, okay? Buy local, stay local, support local. We are only as strong in, in, in this country, we are only as strong as our communities. And in our state, we're only as strong as our communities and our parishes and then our state. So it is up to us to make sure that we get stronger every day, not weaker. And I'll leave you with this. The hero you are waiting for is you. I'm gonna vote for you for Lieutenant Governor. This is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> this is we love, awesome. we love Billy Nungesser, by the way. We love Billy. John Schneider, you are so kind and so generous with your time. Thank you for spending some time with us today, and great luck with the film. We're going to uh, hopefully see you on the 11th for the Christmas festival. and then Come you and on out. It's going to be fun. Remember, it's free. It's free for our community, just our way of saying thank you for welcoming what we do into the great state of Louisiana. John you Schneider, all take care. everybody. Thank you for this. It was wonderful. And I love your logo back there. Well, thank Fantastic. you, sir. <laughs> You're welcome. We'll talk you to take you again care, real soon. Thanks, John, All for right. your time. Take care. My pleasure. Bye-bye, everybody.